In our last lecture, we have seen about object oriented programming and how you can create class based verification environment using OOP that we have seen. In this video, we will discuss classes and objects in detail. So as I have mentioned in last video, in system Verilog, a class is nothing but a user defined data type that encapsulates both the data that is the variables and methods that is functions to operate on that data. It serves as a blueprint for creating objects uh, which are instances of the classes. Classes provide a mechanism for modularization, encapsulation and abstraction in hardware design. So there are some components of classes, mainly the uh, variables and the functions. So member variables represent the state or properties of objects created from the class. They define the data associated with the class and can be of any system Verilog data type. However, functions define the behavior or the operations that can be performed on objects of the class. They encapsulate the functionality associated with the class and operate on the member variable. Methods can have input arguments and returns value if necessary. Sometimes it can be of vo uh, void type also, it will not return any value. So here you can see this employee is nothing but a blueprint. This blueprint has some properties and methods. So the properties could be your name, employee ID, department, salary. So there could be multiple properties like this. Also, we need to define methods in terms of the classes and functions. So methods could be like set name, set employee ID, set department, set salary, uh, calculate bonus, display information. So likewise, you can define the methods. In OOP, what we do, we just define different types of methods to access the properties. And this is how we encapsulate the definition. So there are all the methods we would be using primarily to access the properties. Also here for the employee class, we have different objects like employee one, employee two, employee three. These are nothing but the objects of the class employee. So first we will see this example and then we will move towards the object creation of the class. So here we have defined a rectangle class with two properties, width and height. Then we have methods. So first method is set dimensions to set the width and height of the rectangle. Then we have another method that is calculate area. So here we have given the uh, formula for the area width into height. Another method we have calculate perimeter. So it will return two into width plus height. That is the formula for the perimeter. And then we have also a task to display the rectangle details. This will display the rectangle details, width, height, area and perimeter. So in this way, you can define a class with the properties and methods. I hope now it is more clear to you. What is the role of properties here? This this is the property width and height and these are different methods according to your code, your requirement, you can define that. Next is object creation. So object creation refers to the instantiation of objects based on the blueprint provided by the class definitions. So there is a very simple process of object creation. First, we need to define the class. So a class defines the properties that is the variables and the methods that uh, uh, objects created from that class will possess. It encapsulates data and behavior into a single unit providing a blueprint for creating the objects. Next is object instantiation. So object creation involves instantiating objects based on the class definition. So when an object is created, memory is allocated to store its member variables and methods. So you can see here the example class, then person. This is the name of the class. These are the class uh, properties, name and age. Name is of a string type and age is of integer type. Then we have defined this uh, uh, method that is function void display info. So this is the class class and class. This is completed. So after this class, wherever you want to use this class, you have to create an object for that. So this is class name person and then this is the object person one. You can give any name as per your choice and then initial person one equals to new. So here we have created an object for the class 
to basically use that class this is a way how you can create an object there is another way also you can create uh, an object in a single line so person that is the uh, class name then here an object name you have given equals to new this is the another way how you can create an object so what we have understand here if you want to use the class then you need to create objects class is not a stand alone design to use wherever you want to use the class you have to create objects class is nothing but a user defined data type something like register or the reg data type but to use this data type you need to create object if you want to use other data types like the uh, logic struct bit or integer there you don't need uh, to create an object straight forward uh, you can use that because all the data types are static in nature but here this class is a dynamic data type so yes you need to learn how to create an object so by default the handle has null pointer here the new allocates the memory the new which we have written here that is person one equals to new so this new allocates the memory and this is how we can create objects so we have seen two different methods for the object creation next is constructor in many object oriented programming languages including the system verilog objects are initialized using constructor so a constructor is a special method within a class that is automatically called when an object is created uh, it initializes the object state set default values for the member variables and performs any necessary step constructors have the same name as the class and do not have any return type so we can see the example of constructor here class then the uh, name of the class this is the class property age that which is of integer type then we have written the constructor function new uh, int type edge we are giving here and then edge equals to underscore edge end function then person person underscore edge equals to new 34 so here this 34 is allocating to the property of the class that is to this age so 34 is given to this and the memory location of this 34 will be stored in this handle person edge so are you guys getting how this constructor works whatever value you just want to assign to the uh, class properties uh, you can assign in that way if a user is not assigning any value then it will take a default value here the argument which we are giving uh, most of the time we give a default value here so that if the user is not giving any value then by default that argument value will be stored in the property otherwise whatever value is assigning here that will be stored in your class properties so what we understand here to create the object we basically need to call the functions called new and all the objects are created with the new method every class has a default constructor called the new function so by default the class has constructor you may allocate a value particular value or you may not allocate a value but every class has a default constructor what does the constructor does so it allocates memory when you call new it is going to allocate memory based on the definition of the class and after allocating memory it returns the address of the memory which is nothing but the pointer and that will be stored in your handle variable as i explained you so also the new function initializes all the properties next is this keyword so by using this you can explicitly refer to the member variable and methods of the current object even if they have the same name or the local variables or parameters this helps to clarify the code and avoid the ambiguity so you can see here in this example class person then we have taken the property uh, name and age string type name integer type age then in constructor we have defined function new then the arguments here string name int age so both are having same name properties and the arguments so to make a differentiation between them we use this keyword so this dot name this uh, represents the property name and this name is nothing but the argument name this dot age represent this property edge and this age is nothing but the argument edge so to make a proper differentiation between these two we use this keyword this 
so this is it guys this is about today's video we have understand the basic concept of object oriented programming uh, if you have any doubt let me know in the comment box hit the like button if you like today's content and subscribe vlsi point